mic, screen, head. Am I in shot? I guess I'm gonna be lounging anyways. Which side is that? This side. Oops. There we go. Alrighty. So we have a controller on here. Let's go ahead and open up my desktop here. So what I did was walk around. Well, I didn't walk. I <laughs> rotated this object around with my Creality Ferret and captured, I mean, relatively quickly. You know, this is a little bit sped up, but really just a couple of minutes just kind of rotating this thing around. It's capturing that cloud point data. It's converting, we'll convert that to polygons. We'll take the textures. Uh, it'll UV map that uh, geometry and it'll uh, give us a texture for this thing. Again, just super duper quick, but if I want something that's gonna be a prop that I can use really just for posing. <laughs> so it's not gonna be anything like that I'm, I'm gonna be sending to NASA or anything, but uh, really just taking this data and then cleaning it up and making a, a nice prop out of it. So first thing I wanna do is make sure we're lined up. I'm gonna turn on my floor here yeah, we're pretty well lined up side to side. If I do a quick geometry modify topology mirror and weld, that will copy the left side over to the right side. Um, I can't use it wholesale because, you know, button placement isn't symmetrical, obviously, but I could use that to my advantage to go ahead and take some of this nicer skin over here and put it over here. So, hey, John Yu. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm going to hide. Sorry. Uh, my neighbor has a car that starts up and it sounds like a four or five old um, lawnmowers. <laughs> it's a nice car. Its engine just sounds like trash. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can hear that in the mic or not. So let's go ahead and I don't want to start this. Really what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and do button placement right now. So I have X symmetry turned on on this object, even though it's not technically symmetrical. I'm going to go into, you can go into BI brush insert IMM primitives. I'm going to go into my custom primitive menu. I'm going to grab like a cylinder 16 and I'm going to just start replacing some of these buttons here, or at least getting the placement on there. So I'm going to go through here and this can be a Boolean that'll cut into the object and then I'll duplicate this off and make it a button that'll cut out. So I'm going to do a quick split mass point set of courses under your sub tool split menu and that'll be the first button and then we'll just keep on doing that. Um, since this one worked out nicely I'm just going to duplicate it off. We're going to hit X to go out of X symmetry. We're going to hit W and I'm just going to scoot it on over. Uh, I think that'll be good enough. And then what you can do is if I can, if I don't want to scale it uniformly to make it longer. I just want to scale it along that wide axis. I can hold down Alt and scale in Z and that'll go ahead and scale it for me. So we'll go ahead and put that here. And so what we're going to do is when we go to clean up this mesh, we're going to be, we're going to really polish the hell out of the surface just with brushes, I think. And then that will allow us to make good decisions as far as what needs to be Z remeshed and also using this. This will make more sense as we go. So we'll go ahead and cut that out. That's going to be about the same size as the one I want to use over here. So I'm going to say can hold down control and drag off a copy and we'll just push it over in here. And you can see it, the, the, the limitations of the scanner are the same thing as the exact same thing as the limitations of photogrammetry in general. Uh, dark objects, reflective objects, <clears throat> that type of thing, but it only took a couple minutes, which is also nice. Didn't even have to, you know, go organize my photos or anything like that. Uh, let's go ahead and this one's a little bit bigger. Oh, I also have it right here. So that way I can look down at my reference and figure out what we're modeling as opposed to, I guess it might actually be nice to have a picture up can look at off screen as well but that's all right we'll live okay something like this and then oh, a couple more so I'm gonna go up here scale this down 
Again, these ones are going to be just the Boolean objects. And these holes actually do follow. They follow kind of the curvature of the controller here. There we go. Great. Maybe a little bit bigger. Punched in. Push this in here, and again, as we're as the as the controller starts to tilt, we'll start to tilt these holes too. Is what it looks like on my reference, and then. And again, it already did the heavy lifting as opposed to bringing in a object that I, or, or you know, custom image planes I have to match. This will do the heavy heavy lifting as far as, let's go ahead and do an auto group so I can quickly hold down control and grab this one and tilt it just a tiny bit. So it already made my volumes here. Alrighty, and then just a few more. Uh, for this one, I'm going to Alt-Tap this one again. I'm going to hold down, eh, let's duplicate this off, hit W, move this down here, and we'll duplicate this off. That, that middle button's going to be a little bit, not tricky is not the right word, but it's going to require more than just me scaling a cylinder. All right, so this button here, or I should say the Boolean, for this button here, since we haven't done the buttons yet. We'll go ahead and match the curvature just a bit and reset so I can scoot this back. And one more time, we'll just hold down Alt and just kind of scale that up there. Now, this one, if I were to do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x-axis, that is gonna go across the midpoint of the world because I don't have any local symmetry turned on. So that'll work out fine. And then this one right here, let me figure this one out. Um, I mean, figuring out the whole part of it isn't going to be difficult. It's that rounded part on top. And I want to figure that out along with the Boolean in this case. Give me a second to explain that. Okay, so here we have our Boolean. Um, I'm making an Xbox controller. I'm going to try to anyways. So here we have a, what's it called? A cylinder. And then we're going to hit W to go into gizmo mode. I'm going to put that gizmo right in the middle of this object. I'm going to go to the, uh, what's this called? Gear icon. We're going to do an extender and we're just going to extend this over so we have the rounded sides on all parts. However, I do want this to kind of bubble out because that is like a little bevelly, bevelly type button. Now, if I were to go, so let's say this, let's say uh, group by normal. So I'm gonna take this cap off, control shift, tab, geometry, modify, topology, delete, hidden, uh, hover over an edge with my Z modeler brush, con, uh, switch that to close convex hole, pull out and then round it off. That could be the start of my button here. And now if I do an extender, that'll keep it round and allow me to get that button. I do think I do think that's close enough. However, um, if I wanted to sculpt on this, so this is something we're gonna have to worry about with the other buttons as well. These are gonna be rounded. And if I wanna sculpt on this, you may be thinking, hey, just go in here and say insert multiple edge loops. We'll do keep polygroup. We'll just put some polygroups there or some geometry there. However, those poles are really gonna cause a problem. I can go in here and say delete edge and just kind of like delete every other one and see if I can get some quads going. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is say, okay, that's my button. That's it. Control W, make it all one poly group. We'll do an uncrease all underneath my geometry crease menu. We'll go ahead and say control W for that top and control W for that bottom. We have X symmetry turned on. Let's do a zero measure, same adaptive size down to zero. Keep group smooth groups down to zero. And let's do double. <laughs> and let's do. Uh, let's see. This is very low res, so we'll we'll crank this up to like a thousand. I'm just looking for something that maintain my volumes, give me my shape, and make this a paintable surface. Here's another thing we can do. Let's do a crease PG. Uh, crease poly group. I'm going to hit control D a couple times and then we'll say zero mesh half. 
keep groups move groups down to zero. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, that'll be a nice paintable surface um, if we needed that for poly painting. And I can go ahead and use that for my Boolean as well. Whew, we did it. All right, all right. Um, 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 um. You know what? Now that I look down here, let me do a... So this one's kind of squared off, but then the USB-C is rounded. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, for this bottom one here, we're gonna say, give me a cube that I can stick right in the middle here. And we'll say, Josh, mind if I do a, sorry, subtool split mass points, hit W, and we're gonna stick this right in the middle here. Uh, this one we could do an extender, but I think just scaling will be fine. And these corners will need to be rounded out just a tad, but I think we can make do when we get there. Something like this. And also, this will allow us to be more heavy-handed when we go to clean this up, by the way. I should mention that. Uh, again, all of this will make sense in a second. Now, this is where I had the wire sticking out of the mic. Uh, so really, for this one, all I need to do is say, um, let's duplicate this whole thing off. I'm just going to grab a little piece of this. Control-Shift-A, delete hidden, W, go to unmatch mesh center. Uh, we'll rotate this around. And this will be our mic hole. Mic hole. It's like my name. There we go. Yoink. And... Something like that. Good enough. And then for the back here, let's go ahead and I'll tap this. We have X symmetry turned on. And we have, I'm going to go in here and say, again, that's going to be rounded. So we'll start again with that cylinder 16. Plunk it right in the middle. Say split mass points. And we should be able to do just a simple extender. If I can find it. Yes, I can. And then that will be our USB-C hole. There we go. Boom. All right. I think we've got everything we need finally as far as holding up. Oh, I lied. That one's similar, just smaller. It's like a little thumb latch. W, control drag out a copy. We'll match that surface. Plug it in. We'll scale it down and thin it out just a bit. And the other cool thing about the extender is I can scale stuff down, but if I don't want to, because here's the thing, if I was to just scale this out now, see how it kind of stretches that, um, you know, I have Xymmetry on, I could just move these things out manually, but it is nice just to grab that extender and just have it take that geometry and just move it where I need it to be without losing the roundness of my edges. And then do a geometry modifier, that's fine, and we'll just scale this up. Alrighty, alrighty. We have our booleans. So let's go ahead just temporarily. I'm going to, hmm, just to make this simple, I'm going to say merge all my little shapes together that we've made. And I'm going to move this below. I'm going to set this to subtractive. I'm going to go through here and say, let's go into solo mode. I like to see my groups. So I'm going to say a quick group by normals just so I can eyeball them. And I know that I'm safe when I go, all right, crease by PG. That's under your geometry crease menu. I can hit D for dynamic. Uh, the only one I'm going to change is this one here. This one I might say, let's do this. Poly group, poly loop. I'm going to hold down Alt and then make that all one poly group around the side. Of course, that looks the exact same. There we go. So poly group on the front and back and all the way around the sides. So when I now say uncrease all, then crease PG, that will go ahead and round out these corners just a bit, and then I'm going to go back in here with, uh, let's do insert. Hmm. If we do insert multiple edge groups, it is going to crease as we go, but we can, I'm just basically inserting these to get even distribution, so when we boolean this later, it'll cut a little nicer, uh, and also hold these edges a little bit better. So again, uncrease all, sorry if that made zero sense, crease PG, 
and there we go. Okay, so now these are subtractive. We'll turn on live boolean and look how much nicer it already looks. Now, again, the reason I'm doing this is so when I go through and I'm just gonna be polishing these surfaces, I still wanna maintain the nice subtle little rise here and also make sure my buttons are you know centered where they need to be. But when I, as I go through and clean this up, I don't need to worry about you know being exact or kind of digging in here or anything like this. All I'm really doing is smoothing the surface, which is not as hard as you think. So we have this here. Um, let me see. Oh. Mm. Yeah, this is. I'm gonna probably zero mesh. Uh, if you really wanted to do something nice, you could uh, rebuild it. We'll talk about both. I think. Uh, Zebrush was doing exporting using Decimation Master and the Go Z plugins. So Decimation Master Z plugin. Decimation Master. Export all subtools. Um, so this one, it sounds like it exports all visible subtools into an OBJ file. I don't really know if this into a single OBJ file. That's the same thing as going uh, merge subtool merge visible and then exporting that as an OBJ. So it'll save you a step. If it exports all your OBJ files into a folder, that's the same thing as Z plugin. Uh, what's it called? Subtool master. And then over here, there's an export and this will export all of your OBJs into a folder. Um, in an OBJ form, you can also switch this uh, to be whatever you want in a OBJ. Um, and how that's different than going up here to file or tool export is that it, uh, tool export OBJ will only export the selected subtool. Export FBX will, will export your selected, your visible, or all of your objects, depending on what option you choose when you export. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing it does one of those things. I have never actually used that, so I really don't know what it does, but one of those. Um, oh, and the GoZ plugins. Uh, the GoZ doesn't really export an OBJ file necessarily. What it does is export your files to a cache folder and then send those objects to another program, Max, Maya, Moto, Cinema 4D, or, or, if you've been following my channel, I just published another video this morning. Um, this is what we've been using for sending our ZBrush models to uh, Character Creator. So taking a custom model in this instance, going through, and then hitting Go Z, which sends over that, that cache file into character creator going through and rigging this object up, painting weights, applying animation, sending those pose backs, poses back using the uh, pose tools. So I haven't finished that playlist yet. There's only two videos I've uploaded so far. I, you gotta give me time. I just, there's not enough time in the day, but here is the full playlist as it is. Again, these two I'm gonna have to do a little bit more with so they're not quite published yet. Um, <laughs> that one I did accidentally for a minute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this here if you want to check that out. Um, but yes. Long story short, that's go see. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe if we have time, we'll send this over. Um, if I make crease for the model when I export to another subject, does the crease convert to edge or not? I don't... Hmm... I don't know if creases translate. I want to say creases maybe translate if you go Z into Maya. It might keep your crease data. Don't quote me on that though. Um, if you do want to take your actual geometry and not your crease dynamic data, for example, we have our buttons here and they're creased and they look nice and round. If you want to send that geometry over, you'll have to go over here to geometry, dynamic subdivision, apply. That will make it real geometry. And of course it'll send that over. Although GoZ will drop you down to your lowest subdivision before it does that. So you may have to go delete lower if you want to actually go Z that geo over. Although I wonder if they, I think they may have built something new that GoZ will support multiple subdivision levels. I did remember reading that. I haven't actually used that functionality if it exists. Um, but yeah, as far as sending crease data over into max, I'm not positive. I haven't used Max since Kinetics 3DS Max R2. <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, this one modify how the cursor looks, not just its color. 
Oh, this cursor on my screen? Like the gizmo, I know how to change that look. I don't know how to change your cursor look. It's beyond my abilities. Um, yeah. Shift, maybe under preferences interface or custom UI, no, interface. Uh, navigation miscellaneous. So, yeah, I, would, I mean, there's a t eye colors, custom UI, button, maybe somewhere in here. I've never messed with it, but maybe somewhere in your preferences. Yes, uh, photogrammetry model. Uh, stager messes up the home stage if you move the dishes into the target. Um, I don't use stager a ton. Uh, okay, so if anybody wants to follow along here, if we go to my playlist here, First things first, here's intro to ZBrush. If you don't have any idea what I'm using right now, you can check out the intro to ZBrush series. If you wanna know about Stager specifically, I wanna say that was 2022. Uh, intro to ZBrush 2022, what's new? This one's actually a little bit easier to look at. Uh, 2020, 1.5, oh boy. 2022, what's new? Stager. God, I really don't remember. It's been too long. No, I, I was using that with my Buffalo. That's right. Uh, 2021.7. Anyway, so on my session page, if you scroll down, you're going to see these little folded down things. That's the intro series as well as the ZBrush What's New series that has all of the, the stuff in it. There it is, 2021.7. And then if we go in here, this is part of the 2021 series. And here it is, Geometry Stager, so storing two states, uh, if you want to check that out. Um, I won't send you that link. You know how to find it. Uh, I want to say they made it a little bit better. So essentially, if we have this here, let's see if I remember how this works, since I never use it. Geometry Stager. Um, there it is. So we have a home stage, select, and then I want a target stage for this, let's go ahead and turn off light blue so we can see it. Select, and then I can switch those stages and my home stage is borked. Hmm, hmm. Think, think, think. Focus shift to negative 100. Yeah, I look like it. I hesitate to give you any advice since, <laughs> here, let me go watch that video by Michael Pavlovich because I have no clue. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on there. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, Yara. Yeah, let me go check my... I, mean, I won't check it now, but I'll go dig through my emails here. I have been underwater for the past month. I apologize for that. Uh, okay, so we have live boolean here. We have D for dynamic, and we're going to go ahead and clean the surface off. So we got the Xbox controller here. I'm going to go through, I think just with a little bit of H polish, we'll do the trick. Um, if I want to eat away some of this geometry, I can hold down shift and go into Sculptures Pro, and that will allow me to just kind of chew that geometry up. However, it might end up smoothing more than I want, and I need to turn off X symmetry while we're doing this. Um, in lieu of that, I might be a little more surgical and go in here and say control shift, select lasso, hold down alt, and we'll get rid of this Last of Us looking fungus off the top. And then we'll go ahead and do the same for the rest of these big blobs here. I don't want to cut off too much, so I'll go ahead and hold down Control Shift Alt and we'll we'll add this back. Because I just want to get rid of some of the most globiest of globs here. Again, just so I can polish those surfaces out. Um, exact same thing with the buttons. We already have our booleans, actually, we're going to go, hmm, before I get too far, I am going to go through and make our actual buttons while I have nice, while I have the height data, essentially. I know how far up these buttons need to go, so I want to use that to my advantage before I get rid of them. That makes good sense. So we're going to get rid of this here. Okay, so we got rid of the globiest globby parts, and then we're going to say geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and we'll close holes and that'll go ahead and fill in uh, those areas. Another thing we do too, uh, right now it's just varying degrees of triangulated data here. Uh, I can go in here to my, let's turn off Sculptures Pro. Um, let's talk about geometry 
Dynamesh. If I grab from the resolution slider or the picker and just drag onto my mesh, you'll see it updates the resolution on the fly. So if I like this resolution over here, I can keep it, turn off blur, and I can go ahead and Dynamesh this result. And that will maintain the density. It won't lose any information, but will put me in a Dynamesh state so I can, you know, use that to close my holes as well. Um, okay, so I was going to talk about making these buttons. So if we're good, uh, these buttons here specifically, because I have height data for them. So I'm going to take this one here, and I'm going to say Control Shift. We're going to duplicate all of these off. Control Shift, grab them. Control Shift A. We'll split hidden. And then, like I was talking about before, if I go through here, if I do geometry modified, geometry modified topology mirror and weld, X symmetry is turned on. Grab these cats by holding down Control Shift and tapping, dragging, delete hidden. We're going to say close convex hole like we did earlier, and then we can just go ahead and put a little rounded button cap on here. However, again, if I want to polypaint on this later, what I think I'm going to do, let's go through here and say crease PG. Uh, control D, Control D, zero mesh half, that size down to zero. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh. There we go, good enough. And then that will be my buttons. And then I can say, this is our actual geometry. So if I get rid of my booleans here, I just want to see. Oops, get rid of these booleans here. How high these need to go, as well as. Alt tap the bottom here because I think I rounded them out just a tad too much. I'm going to shrink them down and push them back out just to kind of lower that profile a bit. All right, so that'll be my buttons. And we'll go ahead and start actually. That's where my buttons need to go. So here's the height of my buttons. And then uh, this is my, I'm gonna actually swap this out. I'm gonna du duplicate this object just because I rotated them just a bit. I'm gonna get rid of these ones. Say delete hidden. I'm gonna take this and merge it onto my duplicate. We'll do shift D, crease PG. There we go. All right, and then those will bump in. So subtractive, temporary button. I don't remember what this was for. I guess we don't need it anymore. All righty. So we'll keep that in our back pocket here. So with those showing, these set the live Boolean. Uh, again, going through here and smoothing and H polishing to get my surfaces back. And again, I can be a little heavy handed. So I'm gonna go into solo mode. Uh, we guess we go ahead and turn on X symmetry. There's not perfectly symmetrical, but and then we'll go ahead and turn that off. And I'm just gonna kind of go in and do like just a little bit of spackling and then holding down alt and just kind of scraping away just with my clay brush, nothing fancy. Um, I think that'll work. And then we're gonna follow the curvature of our object here. Let's go ahead and go in here and inflate because we dynamesh, we can just control drag. I'm gonna go down here to brush smooth. Brush modifiers hold while holding down shift. I'm going to turn that up to one. That's weighted smooth mode, and that'll allow me to really smooth my object. Uh, there are the two smooth algorithms. You can hold down shift and smooth, and that will. Um, that's the best way to explain this. That'll really average those verts. You're going to see it really kind of melts everything. Or you can hold down shift and then let go of shift, and that will do an alt smooth, which is going to maintain the volumes a little bit better as you smooth. So depending on what you're smoothing, either one of those might work out fine. So again, back here underneath clay brush here. And then I'm gonna go into my H polish, pretty big H polish brush, and I'm just gonna follow the curvature of the mesh. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna let go of Alt and kind of switch back and forth between those just to make this a nice smooth surface for myself. And then up here, and again, when I go back in here and punch this in, really I'm just looking for that curvature of that surface. And that's nothing I have to go in and match a photograph in and figure that out. It's already kind of been done for me. I'm just doing a cleanup pass on it essentially. So save me some time. So go through and smooth. Now the bad news is this isn't exactly exciting to watch. Um, 
So, oh, here's another thing too. Hold down Shift, go up here to that Sculptures Pro, and just chew away this geometry. And depending on how the size, you can go in here and you can really um, chew away some of that nasty geo. Uh, and here I want to be a little more precise because I want to maintain that curvature here. So I want this top to be nice and flat. So we'll use Sculptures Pro sparingly up until it gets to that edge there. And then I'm going to turn it off and we're going to do a little bit more sculpting in. Okay, good enough, good enough. Uh, go out of Sculptures Pro, go back in here with our clay brush. We'll go ahead and fill this in. And these were dark buttons. You'll see it did a much better job scanning on the light surface than it did on those dark uh, button areas and the reflective button areas too. It had a little bit of a problem with. Granted, my setup wasn't great and I only scanned it for like a minute. So I probably could have done a better job. But again, all I really need is the volume data of the asset. Uh, this is nice and smooth, so that can just be smoothed and then H polished down. Oops. There we go. And then as I get closer to that important edge here, I'm going to skip, hop up here. I'm going to hold down Alt and let go of Alt and just work my way around. This would be the exact same thing if I had kind of like a goopy Dynamesh sculpt, like a sci-fi mechanical sculpt, and I wanted to refine it. I would figure out a way to break it off or to work on it separately and then just go through and just refine my volumes into something nice. Kind of like the ZBrushy hard surface approach to organic hard surface modeling. Just going through and figuring out how to maintain my surfaces with my brushes easily and then go in and do my booleans or um, what else would I do? Rebuilding stuff. Just getting your volumes nice first, and then figuring out your next steps for refinement. So very, very similar. And the other cool thing about the scanner, that's the Creality Ferret scanner, is I can plug it into my phone. So that one you saw was just plugged in my laptop, but you can plug it into your phone and go scan big objects. So that's the next thing I need to do. I scanned a bunch of small objects. Now I need to go through and Go into my garage or outside, see if there's anything cool I can scan out there. And that'll just be my little scanner so I can just go grab stuff if I need it real quick. Save me some time, like I said. All right, so we've got a nice smooth surface here. And again, when we start bullying in, it's going to give us more data so when we go into Ziri Mesh we'll have polygroups and then we'll use that to our advantage to make this geometry simpler so it's not so heavy. Not too bad. Um, sculpting a toy and statue using a base mesh primarily with Sculptors Pro. Okay. Um, is it best to Ziri Mesh or Decimate to keep the details? If I Decimate I can add subdivisions to a Sculptors Pro model. Yeah, um, if you decimate, you can. You, it won't really be a subdivision. Uh, you can't. You can. You can still subdivide. It'll just be nasty triangles. What you can do, if you want to, kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, let me send you this file. ZBrush 2023. What's new? If you want, uh, here's a Z remesh and project history refresher. You can Z remesh and then subdivide and project history, so you can have subdivisions and your details back. That's kind of the best of both worlds. I'm trying to see. I'll send this to you. Let me see. Copy link address. Um, I'm try, I think I've done something like that. You can also, you can decim. I guess if you were going to do something for 3D printing, what I might do. And I'm trying to remember if I where I would have put this. Basically, I think it was on a presentation. Um, <laughs> decimate your model down and then it's like almost like it's almost like a zip file it's like a very it's a low res version of your object except it just has triangles where it needs it to maintain your detail however if you ever find hey on this big broad surface with low polygons i need more detail just like you said you're not adding a subdivision necessarily but you can go in with sculptors pro and you can hold down shift and smooth with no z add and that will add geometry to that area of the surface and then you can go in and sculpt on it and then 
Uh, we'll talk about this. If I decimate this down, we'll talk about that. Uh, but then you can go in and continue sculpting on that, and then you can decimate it back down, almost like re-zipping the file, and uh, you'll kind of be back where you started. So, yes. Yes and no, but also mostly yes, you are correct. Um, so, again, go in here with H polish here. And then uh, on this stuff here, I think I'm just gonna smooth. And there is a slight bevel along that top that I can maintain, I think. Uh, but we do have this nasty stuff up here. So let's go in here and let's see if I can't like clip curve. And we also did mention, um, let's do this too. Again. Delete, oops, didn't want to split hidden. This stuff we don't need, delete it. Uh, close holes. Now, uh, you'll see this button here, it's scanned in a little bit better than in my other side, and I can actually use that to my advantage. So let's go ahead and use, instead of H polish, I'm gonna use trim dynamic. Uh, we'll talk about the differences between those in just a second here. So I'm gonna hit, hold on, shift to smooth, and we'll say, okay, we got a nice button over here. Let's go ahead and eat this away, and we'll go ahead and turn on Sculptors Pro if we wanna see if that'll eat the geometry a little bit better backwards. And then we'll switch back over to H Polish here. Hold down Alt, let go of Alt, just kind of swap in between those two modes here. And let's go into our Damien Standard Brush. I'm just gonna kind of delineate where these surfaces are. That's really what I'm worried about. So surface down, surface up. All right, so we have this button here and I might be able to use it on the other side. We'll see how accurate this thing is on the other side. So if I want this stuff, so if I do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the X axis, it will mirror this object over. However, I just need this data here. Uh, this little button data. So what I can do is I'll duplicate this off. I'll do a quick mirror across the X. I'm going to hold down Control Tap up here in the history to store those vert positions. I'm going to turn off the eyeball so I don't get confused. Um, so now if I have this controller, but those points stored with this mirrored over, what I might be able to do is BHR History Recall Brush. Make sure X symmetry is turned off by tapping X on your keyboard. And I can use this to go through and project those mirrored points over to this side. So that'll make this a little bit easier. And in fact, this little back button here, um, I can maybe clean up, but we'll go ahead and again, we're just gonna use that data over there. You can also turn on Sculptures Pro with this mode and that'll eat up any weird geometry as well while you work. So now we've got those two buttons matching here. And this line, I can recreate that line. That's not a huge deal. So I'm gonna go through here and hold down shift and smooth here. And then go back in with my clay brush. And we're just looking for those volumes. Sorry, I don't know why I thought this would be more exciting than it really is. It's not a super exciting process. It's one of those put on your headphones and kind of zone processes. Not great for a live stream. Um, but hey, I never said I was a great live streamer, for sure, so bear with me. So hold on Alt, let go of Alt, and again, we're just finding our surfaces, and if things get a little bit wiggly, that's all right, we can use our move brush. So again, just finding our surfaces here, and that's going to be flat along the top yeah that kind of goes out and then there's also there's a line right here i want to maintain so let's turn on x symmetry again just real quick so i want to maintain that line there so we'll just mark it with damien standard actually let's turn off x symmetry it's just not quite symmetrical enough i could force the issue i could make it exactly symmetrical in the places where I want it to, but eh, that would require some finesse work, which I don't know if I have this morning. OK, 
Okay, let's go into solo mode here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and fill this in. Again, any areas where you're having problems, we've already done the heavy lifting with our Boolean. We don't need to have that data there. All we need is a surface. And in order to make this a congruent surface, am I using that term correctly? Uh, filling that in is gonna make that a little bit easier. There we go. Look how much easier that is. Nice, nice, Mike. So now, over here on this button, We'll go ahead and say shift to smooth, H polish, like so. And this is, is there a swoop in there? Yeah, there is. There's a slight swoop. It got it. So it kind of goes, yoop. The ergonomics of the Xbox controller. Now, this isn't actually, this is my wife's controller. My controller is an Xbox 360 controller. But that one was black and it didn't scan as easy. So I used hers. Alrighty. And again, oh, so let's talk about this. So H polish is good at polishing surfaces, as you've seen. Uh, however, like on this surface here, this is more of a beveled edge, and that's where trim dynamic could come into play. So I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> Having said that, I'm going to use H polish for that since it's kind of built in. Uh, but when we go to this front area, we'll use Trim Dynamic as opposed to H polish to kind of because H polish respects edges and Trim Dynamic doesn't. So if you need to take something sharp and turn it into a bevel, Trim Dynamics, which you're going to want to use, or any of the trim brushes, but Trim Dynamics is what we're going to use. And then hold down Shift and Smooth. And now that we've done the work on this one, we can try to do this. So let's go down to our duplicate that we mirrored. We'll delete that out of here. We'll duplicate this off again. And again, just do a quick mirror across the X, control tap those points in history, going back, DHR, history recall brush. And then we can just steal that data over to this side. You can see it's off just a little bit. Um, and again, I could force the issue. I could make it match. Um, but I'm not gonna. Maybe I'll use it to clean up. This actually isn't too terrible. Anyway, use it as much as you want and then go back in here. And again, we'll just H polish. And then once we're done with this, all we gotta do is rebuild the rest of the buttons and I think we're done. I don't think it's going to be that complex of an object here. And then we'll talk about Z remeshing and poly painting and heck, maybe we'll go and bake this off in Substance Painter or Marmoset. Have ourselves a grand time. Texture it up, do some variants, have a gold plated variant or whatever your dream Xbox controller is. Okay. Uh, and again, like I said, if it gets a little bit wobbly, you can go back in here with your move brush. Again, not super ideal, but good enough for what we're doing. So now this is what I was talking about. So this right here, I can use H polish because it already has a surface here. However, when I get over to this side, um, I don't think I'll be able to use it. Let's see, let's see the HR. Let me see if I can clean this up using our data from the other side here. Is this going to work? It's not great. Here's another one we can try. Let's go in here to, I don't know if it'll work on a surface that's, uh, we'll talk about it. BT, uh, there's trim adaptive. It can take a surface and then basically cut a straight line from that surface in. So if you wanted to use that, you could. But everything on here is so organic, I don't know that it's going to be that useful. So trim adaptive, no trim dynamic, possibly. Uh, same thing with we were doing with the H polish brush. You can hold down Alt and you can polish out to a surface and then let go of Alt and polish down to a surface. So that way you can get like these hard dividing lines between two objects here like we're doing. That's just holding down Alt and letting go of Alt. So I'm getting some sweet vocal fry this morning. That's nice. Add some more water. Mm. Sorry, I've been ignoring the chat. Um, uh, why everybody says you're a legend of ZBrush? You know why? 
maybe because I've just been around a long time. You know how things that get old and then disappear and you're like, oh, like, oh, remember the legend of whatever. It was some old dude who must have done something and then they, I don't know, people know him because he's old and been around, but then he kind of disappeared, but there's a legend going around and then this, the stories start telling themselves. Um, that would be me. I don't know that I have a real reason to be any sort of legend status, but I've been around a long time. So I think just by default, maybe, I'm just guessing. So right here, so we were talking about, here's H polish, you can H polish up to that edge here. However, if I wanna put an edge in here, that's where trim dynamic comes into play. So I can go through here and I can use this to kind of build in that edge there. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more finesse work than I might be capable of, but I'm gonna go through here. You can also use things like backtrack underneath your stroke menu here, stroke, curve, no, lazy mouse. Um, it's not on, but you can turn this on. You can turn on backtrack and go across a straight line or you can sna snap to a spline or a path. I don't think I'll need any of that. Again, that's if you need super finesse work. Let's turn off lazy mouse. Uh, go for it. I'm just gonna brute force it and call it a day. Alrighty. Again, holding down Alt to polish up to that surface and then letting go of Alt. And you also notice if you if you over, over scope your H polish brush, that's useful for big, broad, smooth surfaces. If you make your H polish brush too small, it could start undulating your surface. And some of that will fix too when we go in and zero mesh. Now this here, so normally what I would do is just hold down shift to smooth and just obliterate my geometry, like these little areas here where I put little markers on the mesh, just hold down shift to smooth. Um, and then go in with my H polish brush and just kind of, you know, match the surfaces. However, around this area here, I'm gonna hold down shift and then let go of shift. And that's gonna run that separate algorithm. Speaking of BS, you can switch, you can switch that if you want by going in here to smooth alt BSA and that will switch your smooth brush over so your default smooth brush is the alternate smooth, the volume preserving smooth. You can use that as your primary smooth if you want. I do not want. All right, so we got around there. And again, when we zero mesh this, that will smooth our, that will have uh, the effect of smoothing our surfaces out as well. So here, and in fact, even the opposite. So if I say, hey, let's take this controller here. Oh, I guess that is the right one. So that one's swapped here. I'm gonna, yeah, that one's already stored in history. So back on this one here, if we do BHR, let's see how close this one got. Oh, not too bad at all. So I'm gonna steal the other side's corner here. And then again, shift to smooth. And I can recreate that all of these dividing lines, these little panel lines, I can recreate. In fact, when I go to rebuild this, what I could do is put a poly group right down that line and have Ziri Mesher build the mesh in for me. I don't know that I'm gonna have to get that crazy. So, all right, shift to smooth here. And then again, hold down shift and let go of shift as I'm smoothing to preserve my volumes around this little lip here for my buttons. Good enough. And let's go back to my questions, see if there's anything I can there I can answer while I'm doing this. Um, solution to model low poly model and ZBrush using crease and export 3D mix and apply turbo smooth modifier. Um, you could send over the same same way I keep my creases in ZBrush if they're I don't know what you'd call it in Max and Maya. It would be, um, and in Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D and Maya, what you could do, because when you export an OBJ out of ZBrush, ZBrush is import export. If you have 
this groups turned on and you send your polygroups over to my it'll separate those surfaces out you can combine those surfaces honestly if I'm gonna do that uh, when I when I do so here here's my surfaces that I want creased right and then I go in here and I say uncrease all oh no everything's not creased well I'm probably just gonna go through here and I can say crease polygroup but that's only if I have polygroups if you can send your polygroup data over you can do the exact same thing and cinema 4d you can I don't know if max you can uh, if not if you just, you know, let's do this, hit Control W, and we'll say uncrease all, and everything's uncreased. How would I crease these things in any other program? I would go and I would crease by an angle tolerance. Crease, boom. So now all of my creasing is pretty much done. I might have to go and clean up or change my angle tolerance to grab more, or like I did in here, go through here and say crease edge and just go through and uncrease any edges I don't want. That might be faster, so that way you don't have to worry about like getting crease data to share. You just do your creases the same way I do in ZBrush by angle tolerance. That gets me 99% there. And then I go and clean up my creases and then I'm done. Not ideal. I just don't know because I can't tell you how to do crease data. That would be my other option. Um, just do it by your normal angle, just like I would in ZBrush. So uncrease all. Uh, actually, we'll just do this. Do, 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 do. And now we're back where we started with our polygroups. Um, can we use a knife brush here? Sure. Um, button rounded was a fill. We'll do we'll do a lot more of that as we move forward. Uh, can brush be used to? It's a close hole, convex hole with Z modeler. Can Z brush be used to export manufacturable files? We have to import CAD softwares and remodel there. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, well, I don't know what you'd be sending it to. However. I do have a thing on just that, and in fact, so here's the Fusion 360 Quick Start Playlist. If you go down here to video 12, working with imported objects, um, there's that. That's tossing back and forth ZBrush data into here for a 3D concept, as well as being able to box model in ZBrush, send that over and convert that to a solid body if you're using quads. Mm, yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you, Morpheus. Um, Oh, nice. Excellent. Glad the videos are helping out. Uh, ZBrush, new since 2021.7, used been a lot. Uh, proxy Pose, I've been using. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing I've added to my custom UI. That's, let's, well, honestly, I don't do, I don't do a ton of ZBrush modeling. Um, unfortunately, but I'm trying to think. Proxy Pose was... When I first started using proxy pose, I'm like, oh, this is cool for posing. And then I started using it for more and more things just to, even if I had subdivision levels, sometimes proxy pose just to even go in and make things lower than I really wanted. Uh, that's come in handy more times than I would have expected. It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I understand how this works. And oh, CPHR, I'll use this occasionally. Uh, again, I'm just stealing data from this side over. There we go. Uh, but then it turned out that, like, uh, I don't know. I just ended up using it for a lot of stuff. Just making things at lower weight and moving them around and changing proportions and volumes. And again, even if I had subdivision history, I wouldn't even use it. Just because proxy pose, I could go even lower um, than maybe my sub D L1. Because so. there's when I'm doing Z remesher, I want to maintain certain relationships when I'm doing proxy pose I don't need to worry about that as much so yeah yeah that's a good one let me see if there's anything else go back to my art station page here uh, you know what maybe YouTube might be better no art station I think is better 2021 2022 this was I don't do a ton of relief work but bar relief was really good uh, knife rectangle updates are good Image planes, noise, not really. Again, and this is all just me. I don't know. There, there's probably a ton of other really cool stuff. That was 2020. Oh, I don't even have 2023 on here. Oops. Sorry, everybody. That's me being stupid. Um, I'll put that on there. Oh, yeah. Dynamic symmetry I use all the time, although this video doesn't have... They published... I published this video, and then they add the dynamic button here. Um, dynamic L sim I use all the time. I don't use that very much. Mask region I use all the time, for sure. We'll use that today. 
it's good to remind myself what's new so I can show it off. Uh, apply last action. I don't use it all the time, but it's nice to have. Uh, zero mesher faster. I'll use um, sculpture pro picker save. Yeah, and proxy pose. Uh, this stuff here is really cool. The 2.5D production projection brushes, kind of like for you old school ZBrush users. Um, it's a little more robust, easier to use projection master style of creation. Uh, you basically just drop your objects and then use your 2.5D brushes and all the cool stuff you can do with those to do some modeling. I don't know that we'll use it today, but those are cool. I don't use them a ton, but then again, I don't really sculpt and ZBrush that much, so. All right. Anyway, so again, we've got our overall volumes here, and this is where if you were just going to rebuild this stuff, you know, go in there with your Z-spheres and start plotting your points or, you know, Again, Max Miyamoto, Blender, Cinema 4D, they've all got Topo Gun, all any of your 3D code, whatever you want to use. To read Topologize, I would probably just use Z-Spheres just because it's easy and it's already built in and I don't have to export anything. Um, but I don't know that we'll actually need to do that. We'll see. Um, I could certainly demo it, but I don't know that I would need to go over this thing with a fine tooth comb since that's not really what I need this prop for like a, a pristine rebuilt prop that would and I'll, honestly that would take hours of me just doing some more boring stuff than I'm actually doing right now which can you imagine even more boring than this it exists and it's me retopologizing and using any of the above <laughs> uh, techniques that we talked about and you know what I'm gonna crank up our dynamesh resolution a little bit too as we're getting a little bit more refined I want to hold my edges a little bit better so just cranking up that resolution, not really cranking it up, but just turning it up slightly will help, I think. And then I did get a coffee delivery. So I am going to have to grab some of that because uh, I haven't even started my day yet. I'm already starting to slip. You know, you're in for a real good fun day when that's the case. All right. And again, some of these lumps and bumps we'll take care of in the zero mesh process. Because we're going to essentially take what is a lot of vertex data and we're going to simplify that down to not a lot of vertex data. And that just in the nature of that process will automatically give us an average between two points that are further apart, which has a smoothing effect, which is totally sweet. But since we will be baking off from this mesh, probably, I'm just going to go through. Let's go ahead and fill this in just a little bit here. Some letters on here I'm not going to worry about. Hold down Alt, let go of Alt, make my brush a little bigger, and there we go. And there are going to be hints of those seam lines left behind. And I'm going to use my eh, probably a chisel brush or maybe damn standard just to go through and recut those lines in. If I was really smart, I'd get rid of them completely. But I'm just nervous that by removing them completely, that's going to make it a little bit harder to find where they're supposed to go. So I'm, I'm struggling with that in my brain right now, the internal struggle. Of what do I do live that will give me the biggest bang for my buck, but also not bite me in the butt later? And sometimes those two options don't always overlap. So, 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 so to go through here, I'm going to use Damien Standard. And now that we've got our volumes in place, I'm going to go through and just start uh, refining my surfaces just a tiny bit. So I can hold down Alt and pull up to a surface and then let go of Alt and push down to a surface. Go in here to my move brush or my move brush with curve, Accu curve turned on. That'll allow me to push smaller parts as well as pull to corners. Um, that might also be useful. So again, holding down Alt and then letting go of Alt and then move brush. And again, this is a lot of brush finesse work. 
not my forte, if I'm being honest. You might have a little bit of an easier time than I am. And then there's a seam line. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to go the faster route. So feel free to spend your time and rebuild all this stuff if you'd like. I think I'm just going to do a quick smooth pass like we've already done, and then just do a very quick chisel brush or equivalent down the sides here. I'm not going to worry too much. Some of the egregious stuff I do want to get rid of, but I might just brute force it. Yeah. Okay. And let me go see if there's another question before we dive into the next step. You know, let's do a little bit of an inflate brush. That's a little bit of a softer, more forgiving brush than a clay brush can be sometimes. Although, gosh, let me go change my Wacom settings here. Okay, go out of solo mode. You're gonna see I might need to reposition some of these. So let's go and select those. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift, grab a little piece of this one. Um, what was I doing? Grab a little piece, control shift A, mask, invert that mask, and then I'm going to snudge, snudge that into place, and then I'm going to alt tap the body here. And we'll just round this off, and yeah, that worked out pretty well. I think I'm getting close. Let's see if I can't H polish this down here. And then hold down Alt on this side to pull it out. And then maybe a little trim dynamic to just force that edge back. All right, we have enough info to get this where it needs to be. I just finding I keep finding little little tiny areas that I want to go in and clean up, but I know it's probably trying your patience watching me do that. And I do when I would like to move on. So, we've spent enough time finessing our volumes. Now let's go through and finish this thing out. But spend as much time finessing your volumes as you like. Put on your favorite disco album. Let's go disco. Peaked 1979. A little syrupy, sweet disco music to re-topologize by, go through fix what you need to fix. All right, so we have our object here. Um, I might do, hmm, the question is, do I wanna do my seam lines now or after I've zero meshed? Zero meshing will give me a more predictable surface, which might be better for seam lines. Yeah, maybe I answered it. We can always change your mind later. It's not a huge deal. All right. Okay, so we have our volumes and we have our booleans. Time to go to the next step, I think. Sorry. And actually, the there is a little bit of noise on here, and there is a little bit of noise in the model itself. There's a kind of a grippy texture so we can add that back in but we'll probably do that in the texture we can do that with surface noise and zbrush or we can do that with like tiling noise and substance painter or an unreal material or whatever you're pick your poison okay back um cool <laughs> 
I agree. Uh, and Max, you can assign smoothing groups at angle 45, then you return to smooth. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, symmetry on. This isn't. It, it's not. Uh, it's not perfectly symmetrical. I wish it was, and I could force it to be a little more symmetrical in the areas uh, that aren't symmetrical. Uh, but since this was scan data, and I had to eyeball it into place as far as its axis of symmetry, and I didn't really spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, like I said, I could go through and force the issue. Oh, that actually does go down. Um, but in this case, I don't think I'm gonna. But yes, ideally, it would be symmetrical. And in fact, you here's another thing you could have done right at the very beginning, is you could have said mirror and weld, and then gotten rid of an, of the parts that aren't symmetrical, and then merged like union that together, dynamesh that together, and then that would be an easy start for your symmetrical mesh. Um, yeah, maybe do that instead. Sorry, everybody, if you're just joining us. Um, great uh, <laughs> observation from Fish66. Um, do that. Save yourself some time. Uh, how are the CC videos coming along? Looking forward to the clock videos. Yes, so that one's coming up next. There's a few little adjustments I need to make. Uh, but accessory video is out this morning, and then I'll do the clock video tonight. Get that one going. Um, yeah, 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 totally. No problemo. No, good, good, good question. And uh, if I would have been, if my brain would have been working a little bit better this morning, I might have had, any, had an even better answer for you, but unfortunately. Okay, so next steps. We have our Booleans here and we have our buttons. So the first thing we need to do is on our Booleans, this is a very important step, make sure you do group by normal so that you have a polygroup where you want different areas of your mesh to have a different polygroup color. Um, the reason that is important, let's do this. Uh, also, I don't necessarily need, well, that's fine. Um, the reason that's important is that's going to allow Ziri Mesher to put polygroup, or to put lines, very specific lines, uh, where polygroup changes occur. And that's going to allow us to control those edges a little bit better. So for example, let's say, let's just give this a shot. So I've got my buttons, my Boolean buttons in here. I think that'll work. Now you're also gonna see if I do shift D that turns dynamic off and that makes them, you know, this faceted kind of look and I hit D, ah, everything's nice and smooth. That's just a dynamic preview right here underneath geometry dynamic. However, when I go to Boolean this, I can tell it, hey, give me a Boolean with dynamic subdivision on so that I get the nice smooth result. Now that will make a U mesh out here just sitting in my, um, to, so tool palette. Whenever I hop out of my normal tool, I like to do a quick save. That will save a Z project with everything in it, uh, just in case something goes awry. I can always go back to it. So here's our Xbox controller. Here we're going to go into Polyframe, and you can see we have polygroups. So our big red area is all one. Uh, it should all be one, be one polygroup. Let's do that. So back here, we closed holes. Uh, I left some weird geometry or some weird polygroups. I'm going to hit Control-W, make it all one polygroup. And then we're going to say uh, Live Boolean is on. Dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. Quick save. Oh, sorry, that's nine on your keyboard. You probably can't see it on your screen. And then here's our U mesh here. Again, this isn't symmetrical, but am I skipping a step? Oh, we're okay. So uh, these are my high res verts that I want to kind of maybe keep around. So I'm gonna hold down control and tap that point in history just in case I need to snap back to them. Uh, then I'm not gonna turn X symmetry on because this isn't symmetrical button layout, but I am gonna go in here to zero mesh. We're at a million polygons. Let's do a target polygon count of like 100,000. Adapt to size down quite a bit because we want mostly nice even quads, although we are building in a lot of really weird shapes. So I'm gonna leave that up just a bit. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero because they're already smooth. They're booleaned out, so they should be nice and dynamically round and smooth. And then zero mesh. Um, uh, where can I upload my works on ZBrush account on the website? Uh, ZBrush Central? Let's see here. If you're on ZBrush Central, I think this right, this button right here, new topic. That will allow you to go through and 
put a title, drive, drag and drop your stuff in here, or link anything you need, and then a preview will show up over here. Let me see if I have one that I have set up. What did I, what did I submit? Um, this is my last one, I think. Salacious B. So yeah, uh, if I go in here, can I edit this? Oh, this is already in edit mode. Is it? No. Anyway, um, yeah, that's how it works. Cool, excellent. Glad, uh, <laughs> sometimes my live streams aren't everybody's cup of tea. So we have everything Boolean in. We have a Ziri mesh uh, object here. If I want to try my luck, everything worked pretty well. Damn. Um, great job, Ziri mesher. I'm going to say Ziri mesh half. Uh, depth size 11 is fine. Keep groups, and we'll see how low we can go. You do need to start worrying a little bit about, and it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. It's keeping you nice, even quads while building in a bunch of these round surfaces. Um, so give it a little bit of leeway. It's not going to work miracles. You'll notice that these things maybe start becoming less round. We're starting to lose just enough geometry in here to where it won't be able to maintain its volumes if we go half again. I think, honestly, this is probably our best bet. Uh, it did a pretty good job. You can go in and you can finesse this, but I think I think we're in good shape with this one here. This, this is a little concerning right here. Um, that's probably not going to do great things when I smooth. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see, we can always fix it. So here is our reduced mesh. Now, even without going through and projecting back my details, which I really don't need to do, um, I can just hit D for dynamic, and then we can say crease PG. And then here is our Ziri meshed version. Uh, it's a little bit smoother. I can go in and I can start carving in detail. This will act very predictably because it's just nice quads. So I honestly, I don't even, I'm not even gonna project back my detail. I think this is fine. So we like this. Let's go back in here. You know what, just in case, I'm gonna do a save as, and we'll call this Xbox working. Just in case as I start deleting things out of my scene and I don't wanna be like, oops, I really wish I had kept that around. I got a file I can go back to. So what was I doing? This is my U mesh. This is my Xbox controller here. Yes, so this is just our smooth mesh. We don't really need that anymore. Probably delete it out of our scene. This one is the mirrored version. Delete, oh. And then we're gonna go in here and say insert. We'll grab that U mesh here. We'll put that back at the top. Uh, we don't even really need these Booleans anymore, but we're gonna keep them around so we can build buttons off of those. And then these are our RR buttons. There we go. So, uh, okay, we'll start with these buttons here. So these are the buttons we put in and then we made booleans out of them. Um, we do have X symmetry turned on for these. I'm gonna hold down, you yeah, know, let's simplify some of these. So control shift tap, oop, control shift tap, the bottom here, control shift drag, geometry modify topology, delete hidden. I'm gonna go in here and say close, convex hole, hover over an edge of the Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, edge, hover over an edge, close convex hole. You can just close that. Um, or like we were talking about before, if you click and drag, you can round it out. But we're not doing that. So no fun. Uh, here's another trick. You can go in here. Sometimes, we'll see how the well this does. Edge loop. You can sometimes go in here and do a delete loops. And that'll simplify this. You just change the angle to delete more or less loops here. So if you want to get rid of those loops, I turned it down to like an angle of six. And it got rid of them for me. Um, they are a little skewed, but that's okay. And if you want to put them back in, just insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, and we don't need to put that many in. We'll just keep it nice and quads. And then we'll say crease PG, hit D for dynamic, and there's a button. Now, we don't have to do, right now, oh boy, let me close some of this stuff out. That's why I use a custom menu. So here's our dynamic, and then here's our crease menu. So here's our crease level. So if we do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, that will be the same thing as holding your creases for two subdivisions, uncreasing all, and then subdividing one more time. You can use that to build in a little bit of, just a little bit of a rim. And of course, if you make that, if you do a crease level of one, smooth subdiv, smooth subdiv of three, that'll round it off even more. So you can use that. And again, it's just a preview, just D and shift D uh, will work. However, if we go in here to live Boolean, you're gonna see our Boolean cut in, and then our button is the exact same size as our Boolean. I don't want that. 
you know, this button lives inside there. So what I'm going to do is hit W. I'm going to Alt tap here. We have X symmetry turned on. And then I'm going to hold down Alt with the Z button. And now here's the deal. Yes. If I do this now, it's going to go to world center and away from world center. Go up here. I don't want dynamics. So I'll turn that off. But I do want local symmetry. That will do the local axis of our... Uh, you have... <laughs> You have a world axis, which is across the world, and then you have a local axis, which can be on either side uh, locally for that object. So in this case, if I hold down Alt now, it'll scale on its local axis. We'll scale that down so it fits inside of that. Now, again, we have Booleans cut in. However, if I go into solo mode here, even this one, I can say it's crease level of 15. Let's go crease level of 1. Smooth sort of two, and that'll give me a nice fall off around those holes there. Again, that little area where we were, I knew we were gonna have problems with a little bit of pinching. That's, I don't really care. You can fix that if you'd like, it's fine. So we'll go out of solo mode here, and now we're getting things to fit together nicely. So very quickly, let's go through and swap some of these out. So these are Booleans. Uh, we don't really need them as Booleans. I'm gonna turn, hit that other button over here, which is Everybody in unison, union mesh, um, subtractive, and then difference mesh. So if I go in here and we say, okay, I'm gonna steal this button. Control, oh, so I like to do this, control shift, drag over a little part, control shift A is visibility, grow all, small it hidden. And then we're gonna turn everything else off. We're gonna turn this back on. And this thing needs to fit right in there. So one more time, alt here, and then hold down alt and pull in. And let's look at this button. Eh, that's just a that's just a little little nubbin button. So here's the deal. If I were to right now go in here and say, okay, great, crease level of two, smooth set of a three, these verts average like crazy because let's do shifty, because there's so much distance between here and another vert, which is way down here. So this is where you can go in here and put what we call a control loop in. You can just hold those edges a little bit better and hit D and that'll hold it. Um if you want nice even quads, just in case that's how you want to work, you can also go in here and just add multiple in here. We'll do an increase all crease BG, D for dynamic, crease level two, smooth set of three. There we go. That's got a little bit of a fall off, and then we can scale this down a little bit. It fits right in there. Uh, that's a little bit of a more of a gap than I would want. So here it is flush, and then here it is a little bit of a gap. Hey, alrighty, moving right along. Next, um, these buttons are already done. They're down here, so I'm gonna get rid of these. This one here, uh, we used this, we made this one earlier, and I think that'll just work just fine. So I'm gonna say split this one out. And um, it is a little lumpy on there. Let's turn on X symmetry here, put that right in the middle, and again, we'll just kinda Scale it, alt, alt scale in that z-axis to scale along those two axes. And then that is the height. Oof, that seems extreme. Yeah, it's a little extreme. Yoink. Okay. Let's move these up so I can keep everything nice and organized. All right, uh, these buttons over here should be Interesting. So I'm gonna grab all these. We're gonna say split hidden. Now I can do these all with the same with the same settings, or I can do one and then duplicate the background. I'm gonna to try to do it so that they all inherit the same settings and it just works. So delete hidden, close, convex hole. So I click and pull out. They're not that crazy. Something like that. Okay, so now all I have to do is go in here and tap. It'll maintain the same um, settings. And then in here, yeah, group by normal. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, again, if I try, try to paint on these, these polarized caps are gonna do nasty things to anything I try to paint on here. That's again, if, if you're poly painting, if you're just game resing, this is fine, um, probably. So we're gonna go in here, we'll say crease PG, dynamic. Here it is a dynamic smooth preview. We can also go in here to dynamic apply. Now it's real geometry with real subdivision history. So now I can go in here and say zero mesh, same, death size down to zero, keep root, smooth groups down to zero, 
Siri Mesh, that'll give me new caps here. I think that worked pretty well. I'm gonna get rid of these back ones here. We can simplify those. Not that it really matters, right? Since it's just a ZBrush model for ZBrush purposes, but just in case. So now, uh, and again, this has a lot of geometry packed in, so I might be able to go dynamic without any creasing. And I think I will. If you needed to, though, you could say, you know, crease PG, crease level of one, smooth level of two, but honestly, I don't even need to hold that edge at all. So we'll just say uncrease all. I think that's good enough for our buttons. So D for dynamic, shift D to turn it off. Um, those look pretty extreme. Here's another thing I can do. Um, now that I've got that set up, I'm gonna go in here to auto groups. That will give me a different group for each one of these. I can hold down control and tap, and then I can just maneuver these individually. Um, and they do follow the surface. So after all that work, I probably should have set this up a little better, but that's okay. W, control, tap this one. I was like, oh, I did a good job. No, no, not really. And um, I wanna look at all sides here. <laughs> Again, cause this is following the surface here. So yeesh, I wasn't even close. Oh, you know what it was? Here's my excuse. Um, I was doing Boolean, so I wasn't really concerned about the, the button functionality like the other ones, because the other ones, I was like, oh, let me make the button, and then I'll use this as a, my Boolean. And then these ones, I was like, hey, just give me Booleans. I'll dig, figure out the buttons later. And then I realized, oh, I should have spent a little more time. But anyway, it's easy enough just to go through here and control drag. Another option you could do is just make your brush size really small and then go into the so size of one. So just tap S on your keyboard, draw size over, or go up here to draw size of one. Go into your move brush and turn on auto masking, turn on topological. And then now you can just move with your move brush. And I wonder if you hold down alt, oops. Yeah, if you hold down Alt, you can actually move along the surface normal too. So, just to kind of nudge things into place without having to go into gizmo, that's a nice option. All right. Buttons, W, Control, Tap. We'll pull this out one just a little bit. Okay. Oh, whew. All right, moving right along. Uh, these ones are special cases. These ones are just, these ones don't need buttons. Those are just booleans. Okay, so we're to our special case ones already. Solo mode, we don't need this. Delete hidden. We don't need this top one. So that's not a button. Alrighty. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do the thumb sticks here. So I'm gonna do one, Control Shift A, split hidden, W, Alt Tap. And we'll scale this down just a little bit here. So we'll hold down Alt and we'll Z scale this in just a little bit. And I can just scale this down. So this is gonna be sitting in there and it's kind of got a little rounded top. So how far down does it go? About, about here, let's say. Eh, it's, go, it's a little bit deeper and then it does a little rounded uh, thing. So we'll do Shift D to turn that off. I'm gonna grab this top cap, Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden, close, convex hole again, round it out just a little bit. We'll give it some geometry. And then we can have our stick coming out of here. And then this thing is about just a slightly smaller size. Um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold down Control. We're gonna drag up a copy of this. And again, it's just slightly smaller, so I'm gonna hold down Alt and scale along there. And we're gonna use this as the basis for our thumb stick. And this comes out. I should probably get a picture of this just so I can not have to eyeball it. Um, but you're gonna to have to bear with me. Okay, so we have our thumb stick part and then we have the rounded part. Now we just need to start bridging these two options together. Control Shift, select Lasso. Delete hidden, and I'm gonna go through here, and we're gonna say Q mesh polygroup island. We're gonna pull up. That's gonna flip our normals temporarily. That's okay. If I wanna flip those back, just grab them. Oop. Display properties flip, which for y'all will be way down here underneath display properties flip. Okay, 
control shift tab to bring everything else back. So here's my thumb. Mm hmm. Yep. 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 Nope. We can also, here's another thing too. I think we can say move island along the surface. Ah, look at that. I don't use that a lot, but boy, it comes in handy every once in a while. And you can just move along that normal. Okay, so. I don't know why this is making me so nervous. It's pretty straightforward. So now I need to bridge between these two options here. Hmm, this is where it could get tricky. So looking at this, it looks like it takes up. Let's go in here to slide edge loop complete. I'm gonna slide this over just a bit. We're gonna say polygroup U and U and then get rid of that so we can say delete hidden. And that is gonna go pretty much straight up. So let's do this. Let's do close convex hole. If we Q mesh this up, it will wanna it will wanna snap to something which I can use to my advantage, only I need an edge ring in here that generally matches that one. Um, Hmm. Here's what I can do. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I'm going to use this as just a guide. So we're going to say extrude polygroup ball. I'm not going to do Q mesh because it's going to want to snap. So I'm going to say extrude polygroup ball. Um, and while I do that, I'm going to tap Alt just to make sure I get some nice new polygroups. So I can control tap this one. I'm going to move this into place here. Boop. And that's where that one goes. And then I'm gonna hold down control and drag up and that's gonna give me an edge ring. So you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, this is really weird. I'm just kind of troubleshooting on this fly here. Not making for real great explanations, but here's, here's the deal. So I use that as a guide. I put in an edge ring here as I was control dragging up. Incidentally, you can do that. You can hold down as you're control dragging up and you let go of control, you can just keep adding edge rings. Uh, you can also just hold down control as you drag and just add a new edge ring. So that's what I did. And then now I can go through here and say, okay, extrude polygroup ball and extrude this out. And I can even go through here. I can hold down shift and pull on that surface normal. Okay, so I just use that as my guide. We'll go back through here. We don't need this one anymore. So now I know I have a little thumb thing that comes up and matches that. And now I got a little top part. This thing is fairly rounded. So there's a couple things I can do. I can go through here, I can say bevel, edge loop complete. We'll go ahead and bevel this top and then bevel this bottom and we can just call it a day. Or if you need a little bit more control on those edges here, I can bevel in a little bit and come back in here with insert multiple edge loops, um, interactive elevation, and then just click and pull and like you can drag and round off these corners if you want to. I don't think I'll need to do anything too drastic. Maybe hold that edge here. Does that look right? Hard to say. Uh, okay, so now there's also a bowl scoop on the top of these here. So I'm gonna say slide, edge loop complete. We're gonna slide this over to hold that edge and then this whole middle section is like scooped out from about here. So how do I do this? Control shift tap that poly group, geometry modified to poly to delete hidden. However, when I go through here and say close convex hole, it'll go out but it won't go in. Uh, so what I need to do is like what we talked about before, do a quick save. We're gonna go down here to display properties, flip. We'll flip those normals. And now when I go through here to close convex hole, that'll do the scoop out and then we'll flip it back. All right, so crease. Um, before I do a crease PG, let's make these both the same poly group. Let's make these all the same poly group here. I like to keep my poly groups organized for just this reason, we'll go ahead and even this out a little bit. Insert multiple edge loops, not interactive elevation, keep polygroup. Square it out, square it out. We'll add some loops in here. Okay, uncrease all, crease PG, dynamic, crease level of two, smoothative of three. And now we've got a little thumb button maybe. Let's turn everything else back on. Hmm. That's a little bit rounder. Here's what we can fix do to fix that. Let's do Shift D. So I'm gonna go in here. We're gonna say Insert Alt Alt Insert Multiple Edge Loops Interactive. There we go. does 
look like this needs to be creased too. So we'll put a little poly group in there. Crease PG. Sorry, getting into the minutia. Let's go ahead and turn that off. All right, so we have a little bit of a thumb stick in there and we can finesse that as much as we'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this one. So we're gonna say, get rid of this. Delete hidden, W, thumb stick. Uh, that follows the mesh? Yeah, it does. Let's hold down control and drag off a copy. And this one, again, should follow the angle. Here, which it kind of does. All right, and now this one here, W, Alt, Tap. Let's hold down Alt and Z scale this in so it kind of fits in there. And then this one's gonna be an interesting one. So we're gonna scale this down. This comes out, eh, not insignificantly. Say maybe here-ish. and it kind of goes in. So we already know how to kind of do that. Let's see how far it goes in. About here. So we're gonna say shifty to turn off dynamic. We're gonna say insert single edge loop. And right about here is the center here. So we'll go ahead and make that a poly group here so we can look at it. We're gonna hit W, control tap that poly group. And we're just going to pull that in just a bit. That's gonna hold that surface. So we'll go ahead and say crease PG. And we'll use that for, to our advantage. Now on top of here, let's see, let's go into solo mode here. Um, let's turn on X symmetry with local symmetry on across that local axis. Let's go in here and say cube. Whoa, quick save. I boolean off. Why is that making it huge? Actually, this one needs to rotate back just a tiny bit. I'm gonna set the pivot down here at the base here. We're going to mask just that one. That's fine. Okay, so focus mic. We have this shape here and I want to put on that shape something that also matches the roundness but also has a controller. Okay, I think I can do this. So, <laughs> and I can always adjust that. So I, what I really wanna find out is why this is being a pain. So let's try cube. I'm gonna drag this out. Hmm. Let's turn off else one. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. Um, Sorry, Elson is being weird. So I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna drag out a cube. We're going to say split mass points. I don't need this side here. So we're gonna turn off X symmetry. Delete hidden, solo mode. So now we'll scale this down a little bit. Uh, we don't need these support loops, I don't think. So I'm gonna say insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, just to get rid of those. God, why am I so nervous? <sighs> Let's do group by normals. So these sides here, I'm gonna say extrude polygroup all. We're gonna pull this out and then they come up and then they actually come up a little more. So we're gonna do that. Control Alt W. We're gonna come up and then come up a little more. Like it kind of gets thicker here. So we'll unmask that and we'll pull that up a little bit more. Now we are gonna overshoot this because we're going to use uh, the boolean, a boolean from that to go ahead and make that. Okay, great. So let's do another extrude here. Okay, I think, okay, I, now I understand what I need to do. We're gonna do this on all sides. So we're gonna go and say extrude out, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for you and you and you. And then we're going to say mask. And then we're going to say up. All right, all right, all right. We're getting somewhere. Whew. Okay, we survived, everybody. Feeling good. So now, on this one, we're going to keep everything nice and sharp, I think. I, I am going to even this geometry out just because, let's say, insert multiple edge loops. When I go to Boolean, sometimes it's helpful. Zero interaction. 
elevation, sorry. You, you, you. Just to make things look a little bit nicer. So we have, let's do a quick group by normals, make sure we have polygroups on all our major changes here. And in fact, let's go ahead and put a polygroup right down there, smack dab in the middle. There we go. So when we zero mesh, if we need it, we can use that to our advantage. Uh, let's go ahead and hit for dynamic, and then we're going to say crease PG. That's going to give us a very similar looking object. However, I am going to put dynamic on this one, D for dynamic. And in fact, let's even some of this out. Let's turn off X symmetry, insert multiple edge loops. Let me just put in just a little more geo in here. Uncrease all, crease PG. Okay, dynamic, dynamic. So now, aha, let's do this. So we have this object here. I'm gonna duplicate this off. We can do a difference mesh, I think. Um, control shift tap on our duplicate. Make this all in polygroup so I can hit W, control tap this one. I'm gonna pull this out here. Let's say insert multiple edge loops here. You'll, you'll see what I'm doing in just a second. Increase all. This I don't really need, but whatever. Increase PG. So now, if this is our Boolean object, let's do this. Let's hide everything except for these two. And I'm going to do a difference mesh with my Boolean. Yeah, okay. So we basically just duplicated off the directional pad mesh, use that as our Boolean, and instead of extruding out from the edges, which we also could do and using a subtractive mesh, we're just gonna do a difference mesh. Let's go ahead and hit D for dynamic on this one and we'll say smooth subdiv of three, just to make sure we get a very nice smooth result. And then we have this as our object here. I'm actually, let's do this, shift D. Nope, D for this one. Let's go back here to this pad here. I'm gonna say extrude polygroup all. I'm gonna hold down shift and just push that down a little bit because it does go from a little more shallow to, shallow to a little bit more built up. So I do wanna build that in here. And in order to do that correctly, we've gotta insert single edge. We gotta get rid of these here temporarily. It's going to solo mode so I can see a little bit better. And we'll just add those back in, insert single edge loop. Yeah, it's fine. I see multiple. <laughs> Truly, probably not, not a lot of this matters, but whatever. Uncrease all. Crease PG. Okay. Whew. Ready? Let's do a Boolean dynamic subdivision. Make Boolean mesh. We'll do a quick save because we're hopping out of our main file here. So here's our U mesh. Okay, yeah, I think this will work. Okay, so here's the other problem. Not a problem. Here's another challenge. We have this object here and this object here. And this actually, oh, that is flush. Okay, so here's what we're gonna have to do. On this object here, think, think, think. Let's go into solo mode for this here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and paint all of this so I can just move it down. There we go. So now we're flush. We've got a Boolean. This is going to be our Boolean result. Hmm, should I do that one first and then Boolean it? Let's just, uh, hmm. Uh, let's just see how this is going to work. Okay, so I've got all of this stuff showing. This is exactly what I want. I'm going to go over here to make Boolean mesh dynamic set of vision. Everybody cross your fingers for zero mesh to save my ass again. We have X symmetry turned on with local symmetry. Let's try it. Let's say half, depth size down quite a bit. Keep root smooth groups down to zero. And we have it, local X symmetry. So hopefully, oh, keep poly groups. Keep root smooth groups down to zero. Hmm. Say weld points, maybe? Do 
because it should be keeping my polygroups. Um, oh, 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 oh. We got a slight face issue here. So here's, oh, that's right. So here's my original. Okay, you know, we are going to do this in two parts, I think. Yeah, I think that'll get a nicer result. So what's happening here is my cutting out mesh for our object is uh, interfering with our original button mesh that were on the same planes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move, I'm going to do this cut first. So we're going to say, great, give me a make Boolean mesh. And then we're going to append that U mesh result. And then we're going to say both of these showing. And then this one can be a, un these can be a union mesh here. Yeah, let's try that. Make Boolean mesh. Append that U mesh result. Okay, so we have X symmetry turned on, Zeria mesh, half. I don't know. Keep groups. Yeah, let's do same. Smooth groups down to zero. Not terrible. Let's do a weld points, weld distance up. Zero mesh. All right, let's do double. Let's go up weld points just a little bit more. And double honestly might not be high enough. We might need to go 17,000. We it's, it's sometimes easier just to overshoot the number of polygons you need and then go half. And there's just some very slight minor inconsistencies. I think when I was going through and doing my Boolean operation, it's hiding little poly groups in there. Hmm, can I fix this? Let's say uh, underneath our poly groups here, there is a merge stray groups, merge similar groups. Let's see. Because it's trying to build those poly, those little sliver poly groups in. Um, and I can go through here and I can say, I can get rid of them. Oops, let's see, let's make sure we have X symmetry turn. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, just so close yet so far. I need to. Okay. I need to just bury those in there. So here's this one. Here's this one. It's not a huge deal. I just need to do it. So here, W, we're going to move this down so that those fully become one object here. Because, yeah, these I could fix. And actually, we can do this. We can do symmetry in the X and Z direction, I think, maybe. Although this is on an axis, so maybe not. Oops, not X and Z, X and Y. I don't know where I am in space. Hmm. Not quite, because it is on a slight axis. Sorry about that. X symmetry is fine. Great. All right, I think we got this. If not, I have a backup file where I've actually done this. Let's say load tool here. And I'm trying to remember my order of operations that gave me a very nice result. Um, Hold on, let it catch up. Jeez. So here is the button I did. Oh, you know what? Uh, this is inset just a tiny bit. These weren't flush. Is that true? Oh, you know what? They're not flush. That could have that could have been what helped. But anyway, here's here's that button. So in fact, I can just go through here and I can say, you know what? Insert here. Let's see how well this fits. Honestly, I just want to move on. So I'm going to cheat. Choo. 
Alrighty. Um, so there is all of our stuff. Here is our original scan. Here is our little button. Let's go ahead and scale it in just a little bit there. So that fits generally well. Cool. And I think that's it. Minus, um, if we want to go through here, we can dig into our Damien standard brush, go through here and just kind of carve in a line for this. However, this isn't real geometry yet. If we do shift D, that takes us, here's our uh, dynamic is turned on and off. So if you want this to be real geometry, hit apply. And then of course you can hit control D to keep smoothing. And that way you'll get the actual geometry you need to go through here with like your lazy mouse that's under your stroke menu and go through here and just kind of carve in your lines. There's also BC brush chisel. There might be some good ones in here. Let's choose maybe tip three. And we'll turn that Z intensity down just a bit. And so you can also hold down shift and kind of cut straight across. Oh, that's a little bit. Let's see. Two. Eh, a little bit better. This is a very long lazy radius again. Underneath stroke, lazy mouse, lazy radius. You can go through here and you can kind of just chop in what you need. Um, or you could even use damn standard 02. This one's got kind of an organic feel. I don't know if it'll work great, but it does cut in deep. Let's go in here to L. Lazy radius up just a bit, see if that works any better. Not terrible. So those are options. Just go through here and just kind of slice around your mesh. Okay. Uh, uh, UI gets slower with dynamic sub even for rotation and panning the scene, but don't have the same problem with actual subdivisions, just in case there's more complex ones. Um, it might depend on if you have, uh, I don't have a real file I can open up for this, but if you have, oh, what's it called? If you, if you have a ton of objects and they all have dynamic subdivision on, so even though it's only like maybe 2000 polygons really in memory, because it's dynamically subdividing those objects, it is giving you a preview of what it would look like if it was 10, 20 million polygons, depending on how many subtools you have. So, it could, it could have something to do with that. Like in this instance, it doesn't really matter just because I have, you know, dynamic sub D turned on for like all these little buttons and stuff. It's not really affecting my performance. Uh, but if I had this times a hundred thousand polygon or objects in my scene that were all being subdivided up to millions of polygons, then it would get a little bit laggy. But if for just a couple things, it shouldn't do that. Um, post on this about the new character creator post tools that sounds like yes oh, actually absolutely yeah so z plugin over here um it's a plugin you can download and install if you want to do that here's the follow along youtube playlists uh, or you can just go to my videos it's one of the newer videos here so here installing and using so here's the uh, you know what here just the latest two um We'll walk you through that. And in fact, if we want to just kind of have, you know what, let's have a, oh, I know what I want to do. Okay, let me save this real quick. Save as uh, Xbox working O2. Save. Do I have a version of my file? Of course I must. So we streamed Salacious Crumb last time. Let's see where we left off. Left off. Yes, yes. Okay, so swap him out skin shader four um i would say real quick we're going to send over the body toenails fingernails the tail we're not going to send over eyes um beak is fine tongue is fine now let's make sure i'm going to go in here i'm going to say all low and i'm going to say merge visible how are we looking Thirty-three thousand. i think that'll work fine yeah, we can animate this guy. Okay, so we're gonna delete him out of our scene here. Um, guess we don't need any of these. I'll keep those just in case. You know what, we'll do a quick save. <laughs> okay, so we have an object here. I'm gonna delete my cache preferences. Go Z, I'm gonna clear my cache files. Thank you. And then we're gonna send this over. We do have subdivision history on his body. We don't wanna send over 7 million polygons. We want to send over something manageable um, to pose out and animate. I think we're okay. 
we got fingers on here. We only got three. Okay, we'll see if this will work. So I'm going to say, turn off live boolean, get rid of the history. We're going to say, <laughs> go Z visible. No, wait. There's one thing I want to do. Um, in order to, and this is good for not only just character creator, but also if you're going to send stuff over for like redshift or anything that would use like subsurface scattering that needs a an actual scale to something, we need to scale this object first. So go Z, I have set up to go to character creator. You can set that up under preferences here. Go Z, uh, you can update all your paths. Here's your, here's your paths you can update individually. And then over here with this R button, you can change which program this goes to. So if you want to send something over to Cinema 4D or Maya or Max, just change that. Uh, but in this case, we're going to character creator. Um, and in this case, we're going to cancel out of this because we need to size it first. Cool thing about this plugin, and again, this is a ZBrush plugin. You don't have to use it with Character Creator. It's a ZBrush pose tools you can get. Um, there's a resize over here. So with his body selected, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, how high is he? Uh, you can choose a centimeter uh, preset, or you can go in here with your slider. Um, we'll just make him tiny. We'll say maybe he's 4.5 feet tall. We'll hit resize. Yes. All right. Now we're ready to go Z all. Nope. Visible. There we go. We're going to update these all as props. We do have some textures we're bringing in for the eyes and the beak because we did transfer his poly paint to a texture, which is totally fine. If we want to change that, we can. We'll say update. Da, da, da. Okay, um, some of these where it was just poly paint, we can go in here to scene, body, and like, uh, oops, beak upper, we needed to rename. Beak lower, we can just switch this over to um, smooth, and that'll just render out the poly paint, which is totally fine here. We'll do toenails and fingernails. All right, so we got our character here. I'm going to go to the top. We're going to go in here to modify AccuRig. Um, incidentally, that'll also bring up uh, your, if your if your person was sitting, you know, chest high in the world axis, it would actually put you on the floor at that point. Uh, we're going to create guides. In this case, he's, he's pretty much naked, so we can just do all meshes is totally fine. If you needed to, and there's a bunch of clothes that were on your character, you can go through here, turn off the eyeball, uh, just have the body showing. Go through here and say selected meshes, create guides. And this will bring up some guides that we can place. Mm. We're gonna like my guy coffee. Mm. We're not out of time. We only got six minutes left. So using this diagram, I'm gonna go over here to my bone gizmo display settings. We'll not knock that down a little bit. Now this one's a little bit weird. This one's gonna be for his anatomy. It's gonna be at the base of his skull, so like the atlas bone. This one's gonna be at the base of the neck. Here, uh, this one, the sweep of the neck down. Uh, over to the shoulder here again he's he's a he's a special little guy so I'm gonna try to match these joint positions best I can here and again we're just using the diagram to help us place I don't know no clue where his belly button is we'll say somewhere around here and we do have symmetry and midpoint on right here so midpoint placement symmetry placement so as I'm placing these it's putting me right in the middle of my mesh here and then this is where his toes start to curl. I guess that'll work. Uh, if we're all cool with this, we can say generate skeleton. However, he only has one, two, three fingers. So let's see how this works. Never actually done this with less than five. And this is going to give us our skeleton and also our bone placement for our fingers. There we go. Uh, okay. So we've got this all placed on here. I'm going to go to my hand here, and I'm just going to see if his hands will be super compatible with what we're trying to do. So this one, uh, this <laughs> here's his first knuckle. Here's his second knuckle. Here's his knuckle here. God, really? Yeah, and I guess this one's like way down here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I, what I was doing with this anatomy, but whatever. It's salacious crumb. And then these we'll put down at the bottom. And then for the thumb here, we're going to follow this index finger, quote unquote, back to where we get here. And then this one goes hopefully in a straight-ish line 
down to where our thumb bends. Actually, this is actually where our thumb should bend right here. Um, so we're positioning these joints. However, on this thumb right here, you want to make sure you rotate this axis so it's going to fall right down on the nail beds when you curl your thumb. It curls in the right direction. Uh, again, I'm I'm probably taxing this um, unnecessarily. Another thing you can do, since we have a skeleton, you can go in here and select the skeleton, and we can say we'll turn off midpoint. We have symmetry still turned on, so if you need to reposition any bones, feel free. If we want to, um, now we're ready to bind our skin. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to turn everything else back on because we want everything bound. Um, we can say selected or all. Um, in this case, we don't. You know, here's what we can do. We can have accessories rather than soft binding everything. Like if we want the eyes and the beaks, for example, to just be rigid bound to the head, we can do that. Um, it's up to you. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll say selected meshes, bind skin. That will bind, that will do our soft binding for our organic body parts that are bound to the whole hierarchy and do a rigid bind accessory uh, categorization for the things that we just want bound to a single object. Things that aren't going to bend and squash, that are just going to rotate with the bone, those are going to be our accessories. And in that case, it's going to be the beak and the eyes. So we have everything bound. Let's check to make sure that everything's okay before we go out of this mode. So we'll check our animation here. We'll go through here. We'll say soft physics spin around. Oh, look how pretty. All right. Let's and you can also do a body rig, full body calisthenics checks check. So you can go through here and we can say move our things around. Cool. You can scrub doing his little his little calisthenics. Very flexible. Yeah, get a good stretch in there. Ah, yep. Okay, nice. Okay, so everything's good. Um and again, I, there's some more stuff we can do in here, but generally speaking, we can just go in here and we say remove, we'll restart our bind pose. We're gonna hop out of AccuRig mode. And so we go Z these objects over here. I'm gonna go Z back. You can see there's a go Z button. We're gonna relink here our current pose back to ZBrush. That's just to make sure that everything in ZBrush matches everything in Character Creator. Uh, nothing moved, but just to make sure we were doing that and relinking back, we can. I'm gonna go back here to Character Creator. Uh, and now we can start sending poses over. Now poses can come from, uh, let's say content, animation. Also make sure in our scene that we have body selected. Content, animation, we have motion in here. So if we go in here to human male perform. Um, oops, let's go back down here to smaller um, let's see idle perform uh, sit talk Santa stick serious saloon door so here is salacious crumb just kind of coming in and just opening the saloon door and if I like any one of these poses I can go through here and say okay I like this one actually I want to do a little bit of editing I can go through here and I can say edit pose and now I've got IK and FK in here. So here's FK mode, here's IK mode. Um, if I want to, I can grab any one of these. And as I pull, the rest of his body is gonna wanna follow. Although these need to be locked in order for that to work correctly. So we'll lock that. Oh, can I lock his ankles? Can I? There we go. So now, you know, you can use that to your advantage uh, and also, yeah, just basically going in here and moving stuff around, rotating stuff, whatever you want to do to update these poses, you're free to do. As well as, like in the hand here, I can I can go through here and I can make a, well, <laughs> as best I can for him, make a fist and then spread his fingers out left and right. So basically up and down, left and right is to move these fingers around. And then you can also go through here and you can like, you know, rotate individual joints or whatever you need to do to update this. Anyway. Um, once you're happy with this, or you can also go in here and like, you know, adjust your skin weights, whatever you want to do. But if you're happy with this, now what we can do, we can go in here to plugins, uh, ZBrush pose link. I can send my T pose and my A pose over if I want. So in fact, um, it's underneath, under motion here. You can snap to your A pose and T pose. I'm going to go ahead and send this pose over. So plugins, ZBrush pose link. I'm going to send this current pose to ZBrush pose tools. That's going to go through and add a layer to every single one of my subtools, move my low res verts into position, and store it as a pose that I can snap to. 
So here we are moving into this pose here. Okay, so here's my pose. And that's called pose one. Let's go ahead and rename this to doors. And again, all it's doing is for every single one of my subtools is allowing me, if I go down here to layers, it's adding a CC pose underscore doors. Um, and I can have I can have my own transpose layers where you go into transpose, turn on layer, bring it back, and then you can convert those layers into a CC pose by going in here and saying um, convert layers to pose, and then it'll make a, a, a pose in here. Anyway, let's go back here. Let's go down here to our um, let's see motion pose. Oh, here's a. So you can just double click these and they'll kind of be set up, <laughs> you know, just kind of take these poses. If we like this one, I don't even want to change this one. We'll say plug in ZBrush pose link, uh, send current pose ZBrush pose tools. That's going to give us a new pose. This one we'll call sitting. There we go. So we can say rename once it's done. And now we can swap between doors and sitting and we can turn everything else off uh, if we want to as well. So we can switch over to doors. There we go. Switch back to sitting. There we go. And you can just keep sending uh, these things back and forth. Um, anything else? And of course you can save this file, file save. Uh, so if we go back here to restore bind pose and then for ZBrush to restore our bind pose, we just turn off our layers here. There we go. And then we can go in here to file save as we'll call this salacious test and that way if we ever like close out of zbrush or close out of character create and we've basically broken that go z link you can get it back uh, just by closing out of zbrush opening it back up go in here and hit refresh pose list that will go through your poses or your layers and re reset up your pose list and then you can just go z open this file open the character creator file, go Z, hit relink current pose. It'll relink these files uh, and then you're good to go. You can basically go back through here. And in fact, um, let's go in here, say motion, soft physics, dance. You can even export this file, FBX, export this with the animation, throw it into engine, into Unreal or Marmoset, whatever you want to use and you can animate your stuff. Uh, speaking of, if we go in here to scene, I'm not going to go any further, but like character, um, let's go in here, say remove. Oh, here we go. We were talking about poses. We can say, here's the, here's the T pose that generated for us. Here's the A pose that generated for us. And then here is our bind pose here. If we want to plug in ZBrush pose link, send our A and our T pose over. And that will give us two special buttons that we can use. Anyway, um, Go back here. Ah. Uh, straight line and ZBrush. Oops, let's just send it over. I'm going to show you that one just real quick. Cool. So here we have two buttons active. We have a T pose that we can switch to. And then we have an A pose we can switch to. And then we can switch to our awesome sitting. Yeah, and there we go. So now we have a bunch of pose. Oh, and if I want it, by the way, uh, if you try to go sculpt on this right now, it'll yell at you, hey, you have layers, no big deal. All you got to do is go, hey, I want to edit the sitting pose. That's going to turn all of the layers for that subtool into record mode. And then you just go through and record um, however you want to. Um, let's go ahead and turn off his texture for his body. Anyway. switch this here. Oh, another cool thing too is they also have, if you get out of this mode, you can go all high, all low, which we have in our subtool. And then also you can go one by one, lower res one, lower, uh, higher res. And then you can also divide all of your subtools at once. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we can say uh, lower res, then we'll go through and drop them all down one. There we go. And then you can just go through here and just sculpt. Let's turn off the symmetry and then go through here and just modify your base mesh, or you can manually just go in here for every subtool and drop it down to whatever subdivision you want to mess with and keep sculpting. 
Um, and when you're done, just say save current record. That'll update. And if we go out of sitting, this will put us back into our default bind pose that we had originally. And just as far as just quick layer management is concerned, if we go down here, we're going to see we have CC pose underscore all of these things that tell character pose where to look. If we want to, we can say, hey, you know what? Uh, sitting, I don't want anymore. So you can select it. And if you say delete, it will delete your layers and it'll delete everything. If you say, hey, I just want to remove it from pose, just hit remove and it'll keep your layers. It'll just remove the CC uh, pose underscore. So that way you still have access to your layers. It just isn't sitting here as a selectable uh, pose that you can choose. That's just like if you went into Transpose Master, posed everything, brought everything back with that layer option. Um, you just have a layer out here, probably named Untitled 1 by default. And if you want to convert these uh, layers, all you got to do is say, convert layers to pose. It'll look through in any layers that are named the same. It'll group it with a, or it'll put a CC underscore underneath in front of it. And then it'll make it just one button you have to hit over here. Um, and once that's done, I'll show you how to make a straight line in ZBrush. There's a couple different ways. Cool. Now, if we go in here to a cube 3D, make poly mesh 3D, control D a bunch of times. So if we have a standard brush by default has lazy mouse turned on, granted it's just a lazy radius of one, but with lazy radius turned on, you can hold down shift and that'll just give you a line and then you can just let go and you can go through and you can make a straight line. Um, if you don't have lazy mouse on, you can also just hold down um, shift, just hold down shift as you're drawing and it will just constrain it to a straight line or a 45 degree angle. Um, in fact, if you want to, uh, you can hit Y and go into transpose mode and then as it control click this very last one, that'll set your camera angle. So if you're ever like, I want to make a straight line from this point here to like this point here. Can I move my camera? Yes. Hold on control, tap that white line. And now you have a straight line from that point to this point, if that's useful. Um, is there a topology redefinition technique for a huge maps such as Google Geo infrared given that the edge borders of the mesh need to be exactly preserved? Uh, yeah, so when, if you want to say decimate, for example, or Z remesh, both of, they both have this property. You can go in here to decimation master and you can say freeze borders and that will keep your borders unmovable. Same thing for Z remesh, or there's a border one. Uh, easy to animate thing is not the best animator, but like to try animations. Yep, totally easy. You saw how easy it was. <laughs> Just double click a button. I mean, you need the animations. You can grab them from their their content store uh, or bring it in from Mixamo or I'm gonna, I actually have a Rococo um, mocap suit behind me I need to plug in and then start doing that too. Um, it's a new plugin, Forum Character Creator. Basically, it's just a go Z to Character Creator and then they made this plugin that you can just get. Um, and if you want more information, I'm, I'm coming out with videos as we speak this week. Every day, I'm going to be putting a new video out as I get them done. So here's the first one set up. Here's the second one using accessories. Third one's going to be about cloth. Fourth one's just going to be all about that pose tool. So keep your eyes peeled. It's coming. Um, but here's the videos if you want to go check those out. Cool. Yes, it paints weights automatically. Um, you can go in and refine the weights as much as you want, but it does its own quick weighting. Uh, that's a salacious crumb Star Wars character. Um, oh, I don't know what you're saying there. I apologize. My, um, I guess that Spanish is a little rough. Uh, hi from Japan. I'm gonna, I need to go to Osaka pretty soon. See my brother-in-law. Uh, my favorite uncommon brush that I like to use, occasionally I'll find myself grabbing this brush, miscellaneous. Uh, there's a spherical brush in here I like to use. If you ever just need, you don't want to do an IMM brush, but you do want to do like just a little sphere, little rounded brush thing coming out. I'll use that occasionally. It's kind of a weird one. Cool. Um, you have any other 3D software you're as good fluent in a ZBrush? Not really. I mean, I've been using Maya forever. Um, that'd probably be my second one. Do I use anything else? 
I mean, yeah, I use it. I use everything. I'm just as far as fluency goes, probably not, not anywhere near ZBrush. But um, I'm, I can, uh, I can order food in Cinema 4D. You know what I mean? That kind of fluency where it's like I can go travel to 3D Studio Max or Moto Blender or whatever, and I can, I can maneuver, but I'm not, I'm not doing some really fancy footwork problem solving on the fly, like live stream style. I couldn't do that. Uh, character creator is a separate, it's a completely separate piece of software. So you'd have to buy that. Um, there's a free 30 day trial if you want to check it out and just to play with it. Um, that's what I did. Um, uh, bat or dragon that I don't know, but give me some time. I'm, I want to figure out hair. I want to figure out tails. I want to figure out wings. I want to figure out like big 40 K armor, all sorts of things I want to figure out with that. So it might take me a while, but I, those are all things I want to check out. Um, how can you change the nibs for the pin considering the speed and not a stroke? So what I had to do is go in here. This is for like my Zensi, Zensi Labs or my Wacom. Uh, go in here for ZBrush. I pull this out. So if I'm sketching in Photoshop, I'll pull it in just to get a little bit of more uh, sketchy stroke on my lines. If that's what I want to do in Photoshop. But when I'm in ZBrush, I pull this out. Otherwise, if I keep this at the default or I keep this here, uh, I find that I really wear those nibs down. <laughs> but if I pull it out a little bit, uh, they stay. I, I get to be a little more of a lighter touch. Because if, 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 if I do keep the default, I really find myself pressing in to the surface. And then I'll look at my nib like after a day and it'll be like worn down. So, yes, good question. Uh, cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll let you get your morning back. Are you into 3D printing? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, on my channel here, if we go to 3D print, uh, I got a bunch of lychee or lychee, depending on how you like to pronounce it, uh, playlists on here. So if you want to, you know, figure out lychee slicer, you can go and watch that playlist. And then also like my, I got my Benny five, I got my Elegoo Mars two, two and three pro. I think those are my three main printers. So if you want to check those out, go check those videos. Oops. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And have a good rest of your week. I'll see you on Thursday on my channel. We'll, we'll finish out this Xbox thing or we'll figure out something to do. I think. I'm not going to promise I'm going to live stream on Thursday because I'm super lazy. But maybe on my channel on Thursday we'll live stream.